Oh, we got 10 people, 11 people. Ah! All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. My name is Caitlin. If we haven't already met, it's my pleasure to guide you through practice. And Mason, thank you so much for the intro. We'll get started this afternoon in child's pose. Starting with a tabletop, bring your big toes into touch. Take your knees comfortably wide, sinking the hips back. You can either bend at your elbows, bring the hands to stack and forehead to rest or extend the arms long and bring your forehead down to rest on your yoga mat. So once you've settled into the appropriate shape, if you find that there's any discomfort arriving in the body, you're more than welcome to lie down flat on your belly or flat on the back and modify the shape altogether. We'll start to organize the breathing. Drawing in through the nose, feel your belly, your ribs and your heart Band. There's a little pause of stillness at the top. With your exhale, you soften the same three sections, your belly, your ribs, and your heart. A little pause of emptiness at the bottom. We'll explore that a couple more times, breathing in through your nose, belly, ribs, heart. Breathing out, soften your belly, your ribs, your heart, pause. And to establish community through our practice today, let's do a cleansing exhalation. Smooth and complete as you breathe in. Then open mouth, let it go. One more, just like that, breathing in. And open mouth, let it go. Soft closure of the mouth, breathe in through your nostrils. And find your ujjayi breath out through your nostrils. And as you constrict the back line of your throat, there's ongoing texture, there's an audible sound. It's worth noting that the ujjayi breath does cultivate some internal heat. So if you find throughout this practice that you become overheated, you can always cleanse the exhalation or you take rest. If you'd like more time in your still point, the same as you are, but if you're ready to move on, then inhale, rise to table. There's a felt change for your hands, your knees, and your feet. Do a double check, let your head go heavy. Your feet are disappearing behind the knees. Tuck into your toes. Walk your hands back towards your kneecaps, broken toe pose. Let's take a seat on your heels. And if you find this to be compromising, you can modify the shape just keeping your hands on the ground, bearing less weight on the arches and on the joints of the toes. To so those of you that have your hands free, do a double check with your pinky toes. Make sure that the pinky toes are tucked under. And with your inhalation, Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands, palms touch. Your exhalation, flip the palms, dropping the chin towards the chest. You just skip this part if the hands are on the ground. Keep them there and just continue to move the breath. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, upward palms. Little touch of the finger pads. Flip the hands and exhale, release, dropping the chin towards the chest. Let's go one more like that, breathing in smooth. And breathing out complete. Walk the hands forward, tabletop. Once you have the shoulders stacked above the wrist, do a little hover of the feet. Point your toes and flex. Do that a couple of times, just increasing the range of motion and then rotating the ankles in both directions, distributing the awareness to the entire length of the body, gentle tappings, tops of the feet down onto your mat. And step it back, go high plank, top of your push-up. Your shoulders are still above the wrists and your hips are in line with your shoulders. If there's any sensitivity in the posture arriving in the wrists, know that you can take the hold on your forearms, interlace your fingers, yoga mudra, or you can stay upward on the hands and modify by dropping down to the knees. As we introduce the element of fire into the body, really focus on the solar plexus region, squeezing your belly towards your back. Let that round and dome out the shoulder blades. Hang with me for three. 
The gaze is steady and the breath is steady. For two, take a full breath in, let your torso expand. With your exhale, child pose. Dropping down to the knees, that same shape that we started with, melting forehead down to the floor. Crawl the arms, the hands, all the way over to the left side of your space. Bowing out through your right ribs. Take a half bind with the left forearm, wrapping around the low back of the back rib cage. And we take three rounds of breath. Two more cycles, smooth and slow. Allowing the head, the heart, and the body to gather in the same place. And kickstand through all ten of your fingers, walk through your child pose, take all of that work over to the right, bowing out your left side body. Take a half bind to your right forearm, wrapping right forearm across the low back or the back ribs. Three rounds of conscious breathing. Two more. back through center. With your inhalation, rise through table, and with your exhalation, cat pose. Round out the upper back and tuck the chin towards the chest. Inhale, cow, sending heart energy forward and outward, and exhale to your cat pose. One more full cycle through, breathing in. Lungs are full at the top. And breathing out, empty at the bottom. So you pass to the neutral table, tuck all ten toes, walk the hands, just one hand print forward, meeting me in our first downward facing dog. If you have glasses on like I do, set them off to the side, that way they're not distracting. Take a few pedals into the heels, working and warming up to the ankles, the arches. Couple of pulses into the chest. And just check in with the shoulders. Make sure the shoulders aren't blindly hiking up into the ears. Soften your shoulders down and out of the earlobes. Now, once you're satisfied with those organic movements, settle into your still point. And for the next few rounds of breath, let go of the process of moving so that you can focus on the breath. And we'll introduce Uddiyana Bandha, squeezing your belly towards your back at the bottom of your exhalation. Holding the abdominal lock for three, two, one. Soften your belly, take a deep breath in. Ujjayi breath on the way out. Uddiyana Bandha at the bottom of the exhale. Hold three. Squeezing navel to spine. Two. And one. Then soften the belly. Take a deep breath in. And Ujjayi breath out. Stay calm. Stay with me. On your inhale, look forward. Exhale, walk or hop your feet towards your fingers. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Heart forward, shoulder blades squeeze in. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Say that two more times dynamically. Inhale, halfway lift. Focus on the length of the middle back by squeezing navel to spine. Exhale, forward fold. Last time, breathe in. And empty it out. This is a great opportunity to self-study, bending into the knees, let the belly and ribs drape over thighs. That might turn into a ragdoll with the arms, catching opposite elbows in front of the shins or behind the knees and calf muscles. 
muscles. If you'd like more front body opening, take the expansion into the chest. Interlace your fingers at your low back and roll the knuckles forward away from the back body. If you'd rather be incredibly passive, just let the arms dangle as you take three rounds of conscious breathing. Enjoy the sensation without negating the choice of the ujjayi breath. Allowing your head to go incredibly heavy, last cycle of breath. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands to shin skin or thighs. Exhale, forward fold. Now readjust to the feet. Bring your big toes into touch. There's an inch between your heels. However, if there's any sensitivity in the back body, you're more than welcome to keep feet at hips width distance. Double check the measurement. Two fists in between your ball mounds. Choosing intentionally. Pressing into your heels and your ball mounds. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Arms sweep up. Maybe there's a little back bend at the top, only if that feels good with your exhale, hands to the heart, standing at attention. Soften the gaze as we bow chin to chest, and we'll drop back into the offered intention of our practice of oneness. So we explore the state of connection between the head, the heart, and the body. Feel surrounded by your present moment and know that you are supported by us and that you are not alone. We cleanse the exhalation to show the vibration of our intentions and efforts. Take a deep breath into your belly. Open mouth. Have a beautiful practice. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms sweep high. At the top, open arm twist. Stretch your right arm back, send your left arm forward. Big capital T, fingertip to fingertip. Bumping the right hip point forward and find a gaze that's helpful. Either keeping chin above the chest or send your gaze back towards your right thumb. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms sweep high. But maybe a little back bend at the top. Exhale, open arm twist to the left. Send your left arm back, right arm forward, squeezing muscle to bone as the elbows draw inward. Left hip to the front of your space. Take a full round of breath. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. And maybe a little back, but if that feels good, exhale, forward fold. Hands pass through heart or swan dive the arms wide. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, pass through Chaturanga and lower to the floor. Your knees are there if you want the modification. Tops of the feet press into your mat, all ten of your toenails. Take a kickstand of the fingertips wider than your yoga mat. Inhale, Cobra Pose, lifting your heart. Follow the length of the neck and then the head is last. We'll flow that together. Exhale, lower down, hover your face. Inhale, rise from the belly without squeezing your glutes. With the exhale, lower down. Keep firm into the tops of the feet. Let's go two more. Breathe it in. And empty it out. One more time. Inhale, smooth. And exhale, complete. Flat out your hands and then frame your rib cage. Elbows draw in. Tuck your toes under. Inhale, rise to table or high plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. So let's flow that together for our sun A today. Inhale, gaze forward to hands. Exhale, walk or hop where you're looking. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Little back bend if you like. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take a round of breath, center intention of oneness, of connection. Same work, breath to movement. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, swooping high. Exhale, 
exhale, open arm twist to the right. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, a little back bend if it feels good. Exhale, open arms to the left. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arching back if that feels safe. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Little change here, exhale, Chaturanga, lower just halfway down with or without your knees. Inhale, upward facing dog. Notice the knees and shins are lifted. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. One more cycle, inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel where you're looking. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arching back if that feels good. Exhale, hands to the heart. Center with the breath. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, open arms to the right. Inhale, Urdhva, little arch back if that feels good. Exhale, open arms to the left. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, hips forward. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, down dog or vinyasa through. And as I give you the option to vinyasa through, it's still three deliberate breaths, three deliberate movements. Chaturanga, your back bend of choice, then into downward facing dog. If the vinyasa at all feels stress inducing, please opt out and we meet down dog together. Big breath into the belly and all the breath out. Moving right along. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, travel where you're looking. Inhale, halfway lift. Shoulders down, long neck. Exhale, forward fold. Take a deep bend in your knees. Come all the way down to your seat. As you anchor into the sitting bones, inhale, Navasana, boat pose. A fan favorite. The toes can rest on the floor. You can parallel the shins to the earth or explore full expression if you extend your legs long and project energy out through the toes. Layering on the arms if that feels appropriate, expressing the arms forward but drawing the shoulders back. If that feels good, then explore lateral reach. Spiral the pinkies up and dial your thumbs down. Last option is upward energy through fingers without sacrificing the lift in the heart and the lift in the gaze. Hang with me for five. If you'd like to cleanse the exhale, go for it for four. Here's three, breathing, possibly shaking for two. Hang with me for the in-breath. Out-breath, forward fold. Extra bonus, no hands, but feel free to use the hands. The ground is there for you. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, reset with length. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Crease at the ankles, bend your knees, and let your arms swim up. If there's any sensitivity in the shoulders, you can do a big goal post on the arms, hands to the heart, or hands to the hips as modification options. Lengthen out through the tailbone. Keep squeezing belly towards the back. Utilize the fire that we build in Navasana. Hang with me for the inhalation. Exhalation, chair plane. Bow forward, let your front ribs rest on your thighs without forgetting the hollow of the navel. Arms reaching back. If you want an additional layer, yoga mudra, interlace your fingers and send the heart forward. Base of palms together. Send a little more weight back into the heels. Steady the gaze and find the breath. Narrowing in on the scale of patience. Two more full cycles of breath. Hips sinking a little bit lower, last cycle. Not for nothing, but this is super hard. Take a big breath in, 
Exhale, forward fold. Nice work. Release the hands to the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, down dog or vinyasa through. Now it's worth mentioning that with the vinyasas, yes, they will make you physically stronger, but energetically and mentally, the purpose is to cleanse the palate, preparing for what's next and letting go of what we just did. But know that you can always skip them, go right into down dog. Inhale, sweep your right leg high, down dog kick. Lower your right hip in line with your left, squeeze your navel and knit the front ribs in. Firming into the base of the palms as you breathe in deeply. Exhale, low lunge, right foot between two hands. Now maybe one fluid step or 10 small ones. Anchor left heel into the mat, inhale, warrior one. Now, much like chair pose, if you'd like the modification, do a goal post on the arms or take your hands to your hips. Otherwise, biceps are framing your face and your pinky spiral in. Hold for a big inhale. Exhale, bow forward, humble warrior. Releasing the right ribs towards your right thigh. Keep a long neckline and energy reaching back through the fingers. Drive into the right heel and press into your right bones. Find the breath. We'll take a little flow, inhale, warrior one. Exhale, humble warrior, bow forward. Fullness to emptiness, inhale, warrior one. Exhale, humble. Let's take it one more time, breathing in. And breathing out. Now hold the shape of humble warrior. Drawing the depth of your right hip crease back, pressing into the outer edge of your left heel. If airplane arms is sufficient, stick there with strong, straight elbows. If you'd like to explore something different, swing the arms forward, biceps bring your face. Hugging the arms in towards your center line, and there's energy in all ten of your fingers. Here's our three. Two. And one more inhalation for length. Exhale, extended pyramid. Straighten out the right leg. Release your hands to either your mat or down to two blocks. If you don't have yoga blocks, no stress. You can use books. You can use magazines. I wanted to say VHS tapes, but I don't know how, I don't know how, how valid that would be. Some kind of height or go kickstand or fist with the fingers. Straightening out the right leg and drawing the right hip crease back. If this is super challenging on the hamstrings, just modify the extension and hop your left leg forward. A little more spaciousness for the length of the right leg. Let your spine round and your head go heavy. We'll take three rounds of slow, steady breaths. Drawing the mind into the present. One more cycle. And press into the palms. Lift your left heel high. If you hopped your left foot forward, hop it back. With your inhalation, down dog kick, right leg high. Exhale, down dog or vinyasa through. Once you come to your downward facing dog, check in with the echo of that. Notice if the sensation is a little more concentrated somewhere on the right side, or if it's widespread through the length of your right side. Taking the time to observe and to receive. Explore that on the second side. Inhale, left leg high, down dog kick. Your exhale, square off the left hip, wrapping your left inner thigh up towards the sky. Press into your thumbs and the knuckles of the hands, breathe in. Exhale, low lunge. Left foot, smooth step, or 10 small ones until left foot is in between your two hands. Inhale, warrior one. Your right heel firms down, arms sweep up. Recall your modifications. You can do a goal post 
or take the hands to the hips. Left hip back, right hip forward, take a full breath in. Exhale, humble warrior, bow forward, left ribs to left thigh, you can airplane the arms back. Find the shape, shoulders down, and keep the drive in your left heel, press into your left ball mounts. If you'd like, you lift your five left toes up and spread them. We'll take it as a flow, inhale, warrior one, smooth. Exhale, humble, bow forward. Three more, breathing in. And emptying out. Two more, in breath. And out breath. With patience, breathe it in, warrior one. And humble warrior. Hold the shape and continue to breathe. Airplane wings is sufficient. Stick with long arms behind the body. If you'd like a little bit more, set the arms forward. Spiral your pinkies in. You're holding something precious between your palms. It's our intention. It's your integrity. Three. Ujjayi breath. Two. One more inhale. Exhale, extended pyramid. Hands release to your height or your mat. Straighten out your left leg. Keep the right heel as it is. If this is too much on the length of your left hamstrings, easy modification, hop your right foot forward for more of a traditional shape. We take three rounds of breath, allowing the head to go heavy, the heart to draw towards the upper back body. One more round with the Ujjayi breath. And if you shorten your stance, hop your right foot back, firm into the palms, inhale, down dog kick, left leg sweep it high, exhale, down dog or vinyasa through. Noticing the jaw and the eyebrows. Take a full breath in. Exhale, we take rest. You can either explore another round of child pose or meet me in puppy pose for a different expression. Hips stay on the knees, arms extend forward, and your forehead reaches down towards your mat. If that's not happening, you stack the forearms one on top of the other and bring the ground closer to you. To those of you that have the forehead touching the floor, super easy. The next expression is the chest. Third and final expression is to bring the chin towards the floor. And please tread lightly. It's not worth waking up tomorrow and having a super sore cervical spine. We take five rounds of breath. Now, if puppy pose feels most excellent, take more time in it. If you're ready to move on, Uddiyana Bandha, squeeze belly towards your back, and then slowly rise up into your tabletop. So a couple rounds to neutralize for our cat cow tilt. Inhale, cow pose, heart forward, soft belly. With your exhale, cat pose, high to the spine, chin towards the chest. And then two more together, breathing in. And emptying out. Last full cycle, inhale, belly, ribs, chest. And with the exhale, Belly, ribs, chest. From a neutral table, inhale, right arm high. Spiral the heart open, and with your exhale, thread your needle. Once you settle the right shoulder into your mat, take a half bind, wrap your left forearm across the back body. And with every exhale, press the back of your right hand into the ground. Find a greater revolve and opening to the chest. With loving awareness, you plant your left palm into your mat. Inhale, right arm high, unwind. And exhale, tabletop. Stick that to second side. Inhale, left arm high. Exhale, thread it through. Feel your left shoulder blade wrap away from the spine as you take a half bind. Right forearm across the back. If it felt good on the first side, when you exhale, press the back of your left hand into the ground. And 
with kindness, bring your right palm down to your mat. Inhale, left arm high. And exhale, tabletop. So now that the shoulders are warmed up, we'll bring a little more intensity, meeting me in high plank. Step the legs back with strong and long. This can be done on the elbows and forearms if you prefer to modify. If you want to hold symmetrically, hold at the top of your push up or on the forearms. If you're ready to move on, Vashi stuffs in a side plank. Left hand becomes your foundation, spiral heels to the left. Inhale, right arm high. If you'd like shorter levers, take the right hand to the right hip. If you'd like to drop down to the left knee, cut the posture in half and build strength and stability there. If you would like more, consider floating your right foot, maybe toppling over. You might take a bind, right piece, fingers and thumbs, catch the right big toe, little kick up, a baby kick up. So wherever you can keep breathing for three, steady the gaze, move the breath. Two, take a big breath in, listen carefully. Exhale, chaturanga, or right into downward facing dog. Inhale, back end of choice. Exhale, downward facing dog. Then we'll explore second side. We need back in a high plank. Recall the elbows and forearms are there if you want them to be. Right hand becomes your foundation. Roll your heels to the right. Big breath in, left arm high. Modification, right knee down. Cuts the body weight in half. To those of you that want a little bit more, consider the hover. Consider the bind, left piece, fingers and thumbs, catch your left big toe. Maybe a little kick, maybe a big kick. Steady the gaze and move the breath. Noticing the quality of your thoughts as we have two. Shine brightly as you breathe in, that's one. Listen carefully, exhale, chaturanga, or right into your downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, walk or hop where you're looking. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. And let's release the wrist after bearing all of that pressure. I'd like to give a couple of options. Option one is rotations of the wrist. So super easy, breezy, just both directions. If that feels good, bring the backs of the hands to your mat or towards your side ribs. But we're still hanging in the forward fold. Option three, Padahasasana, stepping on the palms of the hands, toes at the wrist crease. But to those of you that have taken option three, make sure the belly and ribs are on your thighs. And with every exhale, you deepen your forward fold. Two more rounds of breath. Focusing on the expansion along the back line of the torso. One more round. Take a big bend in the knees if the hands are bound. Free them. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, malasana, garland pose. So we toe heel the feet wide, the toes out, heels are in. And deep bend in the knees, hips towards the heels. This is another opportunity to sit on height, if that's pillows or if it's books. Know that you can stack them and bring the earth closer to the sitting bones. Like more stability, hands can stay down, otherwise full expression, thumbs nestle into the sternum. There's some polarity happening here. The elbows press into the legs and the legs squeeze into the elbows. Shoulders roll back. Now often what we'll see happening in students' bodies with malasana there's this big hunch in crouching forward. You want the heart to stay lifted, the back body to stay smooth. The line of energy that you are seeking is from the base of the skull shooting down to the tailbone. Let's take a couple rounds of breath. Now if you are content in Malasana, this is where I'll ask you to stay. If you'd like to balance on the hands, we can explore Bhakasana Crow Pose. Take a big lift in the hips, adjust your feet, hips width distance. Plant your hands at shoulder width distance. It's not too wide, it's not super shallow. The wrist creases are parallel to the small edges of your mat so you're safe when you bear the weight on them. 
Bending your elbows back. And I'm going to say that another time, just so you can really focus on the bend of the elbows back and the bend of the knees forward. You then lift your heels up, begin to trust more weight into the finger pads and the base of the palms. Uriana Banda, squeeze the belly, send the gaze forward, lifting one set of toes or second set of toes. If you have nothing to do with this today, then you please stay in Malasana, or you can explore the shape without lifting the feet. You stay grounded with four points of contact. Here's three. Stay calm wherever you are. Here's two. And one. Now up to you. Dolphin pose is where we meet. So if you really want the vinyasa to get back there, take the vinyasa. Otherwise, stepping your feet back, drop down to the elbows and forearms, lift your hips up. If you find this to be compromising on the chest or the shoulders, no stress, no worries, you can do two things. Widen your feet and bend your knees. A few rounds of breath. Really focus on the drive of the elbows and forearms, creating as much spaciousness between the head and the floor. Soften the gaze and draw inward. I know that as you navigate through the practice, calm breeds calm. So you stay steady. You stay centered with the head, the heart, and the body gathering in the same place, in the home of your practice. Those of you that would like more time in your still point, please sustain and enjoy just as you are. If you're ready to move on, we'll meet belly down, hips, belly, front ribs, and chest. So a little bit of spine strengthening, beginning with our locust pose. Stretching the arms out in a big capital T, point your toes and squeeze the inner ankles together. With your inhalation, Chalabhasana, full expression of locust, arms, legs, chest, take flight. Squeezing inner ankles together, taut through the inner shoulder blades. Make sure the neck is long. Often we'll crank the gaze forward, but keep the neck happy and draw the chin closer to your collarbones. Take three. Think of lengthening through the limbs just as much as you're finding the height for two. Full breath into your belly, shine brighter. Exhale, lower, pillow the hands, let your forehead take rest, or arms go long at your sides, and bring either cheek, ear, or temple down to rest. So a couple rounds of breath to balance the stress with rest. And to whatever degree the heart is beating, the heart is jumping, you regulate with the tool of ujjayi breath. Then moving on to Danyarasana floor bow. Bend into the knees, reach your hands back, you're catching the pinky toe sides of the feet. If that's not happening, please don't force it for the sake of your spine, reaching the arms back to airplane wings as a modification. If you'd like the advancement, consider walking down to the ankles or the shins. Draw the inner knees together, thinking knees inside of your hips the whole time we're in the shape. With an inhale, kick up, kick back, and then peel your thighs up off of the ground. If you have a spaciousness, move through the entire front line of the body without negating the choice of the breath. 
So there's minimal rocking forward and backward. Try to maximize the still point for three. Steady the gaze or close the eyes. Here's two. This feels really lovely right now. Take a big breath in, lift up, and the exhale, lower down. Recall that you have options, pillow hands or arms straight in your sides and bring the opposite side of the face down to rest. Wiper the legs. Let your feet sway to the right and to the left. And to counter the spine strengthening, a little bit of abdominal work. Rising up through a tabletop. And if you prefer to stay belly down, I fully respect that. From tabletop, tuck your toes under. Your shoulders stay stacked above the wrists. With an in-breath, hover the knees just two to three inches off of the ground. So try not to overshoot it. You have two options with the spine, either neutral, as if you were still in tabletop, or protract the shoulder blades as if you were in a cat pose. Think chin to chest and chest into the chin. Hang with me and breathe for three. Lifting your belly towards your back. Two. Notice where the heat begins to build. For me, it's in my face. Take a big inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lengthen everything. Smooth out the breath. One bouncing posture, and we'll be in our complete cool down. Inhale, look forward to your fingers. Exhale, travel where you're looking. You walk or hop, toes to fingers. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms sweep high. Little back bend if that feels good. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take three rounds of conscious breath. Let your breath steady. Let your mind steady. So that the framework of the physical body can steady. You transfer the weight into your left foot. Bring your right big toe to the ground and open up your right hip. First expression of Rikshasana tree pose. If you'd like to move on, slide the sole of your right foot to left ankle, calf, or use your right hand as an assist, draw the right arch into the left inner thigh. Hands can stay connected at the heart space. Steady the gaze there, steady the breath. If you'd like to explore a different variation, bring the back of your right hand to your right inner thigh. Move slow and take your time, and then sweeping over, arching through the left side body. Pressing into the ball mounds along your left foot, your left heel. Distribute the weight and the strength and the concentration. Final layer, depending on where the hands are, you might take Jnana Mudra, draw the index fingers and thumbs to touch, encouraging the prana to move and the mind to focus. Send the breath low as you inhale. With patience, exhale and release into Tadasana. Stamp your right foot next to your left. Let your arms go long and your gaze soften. And you feel the echo of your roots from tree pose. And tune into the frequency of your present moment. And you're just surrounded by it. Right? There's nowhere else to be but here. And as we approach our second side, there's no expectation, there's no comparison. Transfer the weight into your right foot, bring your left big toe to the ground, open up your left hip like a gate. Choosing to stay right here with the in-breath Rikshasana tree pose, 
Sole of left foot to the right ankle, calf. We use the left hand to assist, drawing it all the way up to the right inner thigh. The gaze will steady at your horizon line. Heart is open, shoulders are down. If you went for the side body workings, back of your left hand, bring it to your left inner thigh. And with your inhale, big arch over, working through your right obliques, right armpit, the length of your right tricep into five right fingers. All right, exploring the shape without negating the breath, allowing the prana to move. Option for Janana Mudra, draw the index fingers and thumbs to touch. Soft extension through your middle ring and pinky fingers. And with a state of connection, we lift the heart, we calm the mind, and we breathe. With the skill of patience, we breathe into our balance. Exhale and release, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Stamp the sole of the left foot, arms go long. Carry the lift into your heart space and the crown of the head and just let your body breathe. You feel at home in your body. There's no resistance. There's no struggle. You're at home. And keep the state of connection, of oneness, with your inhalation, Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands. Keeping the gaze soft, if that feels good, with the exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, down dog, or vinyasa two. Inhale, right leg high, down dog kick. Exhale, half pigeon, swing your right knee to the outside of the right wrist. It's wider than your right hip. Guiding your left leg back. If you find that a lot of the weight dumps into the right hip, you can wedge any of that height underneath your right butt cheek. On an exhale breath, take your forward fold releasing the heart and the head heavy. And to those of you that prefer the modification of half pigeon, there's no frustration or judgment in that. Please lie down on the back and take a figure four. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Your left foot can stay grounded or lifting your legs up and interlace your fingers behind your left thigh. Maybe your left shin, just depending on what feels sustainable. We'll take a couple rounds of breath, smooth and slow. And to anchor the mind, when you breathe in, you feel that you are breathing in, wholly, fully. And when you breathe out, you feel that you're breathing out. Just as the breath is fluctuating, the sound around you and without you is fluctuating. But there's no blind reaction to any one thing. So incredibly present with your transition. If you're on the back, you uncross. You can do a full body stretch. Stay on the back body if you are on the back body. If you're coming from half pigeon, press into your palms, let your heart, neck, and head lift. And then inhalation, sweep your right leg high. You decide you can roll the right hip open, do a couple of hip circles or ankle rotations. If you're coming from an open hip, down dog is where we meet. And setting up our second side. If you're still moving, please self-study and self-explore. 
Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, half pigeon. Left knee wider than your left wrist and left hip. Right leg, and nice walk back. Might be worth double checking, glancing over the right shoulder, right heel in line with the center of your right glute. And forward fold the torso on an exhale and fully surrender the weight of your head onto something. If half pigeon is not happening on this side, take it reclined. You cross left ankle over right thigh and draw the legs into the chest if you'd like more. Take a bind on right hamstrings or the top of your right shin. And gradually your fidgets, your movements, they become smaller and smaller, dropping into your still point. Dropping into the breath. And the felt experience of fullness when you inhale. And the emptiness as you exhale. go of whatever tensions you don't need to be here and breathe here whether that's your shoulders or your jaw in the space behind your closed eyes to any one thing. And again, to those of you that are supine on the back body, uncross and slowly release. You might explore a full body stretch or windshield wipers of the legs. If you're coming out of your half pigeon, return to your palms. Feel the open quality in your heart and the gaze with your inhale, sweep your left leg high. And exhale, roll the left hip open. If that feels good, again, circling through the hip or ankle rotations. Closing off the left hip, and we'll meet in a seat. Inhale, gaze forward from down dog. With your exhale, walk or hop. Take a deep bend in the knees, and if you're reclined right now, Hug the knees into the chest, rock and roll, rock and roll. Gain the momentum to join me upright. Taking the legs nice and wide, anchor into the sitting bones, and you can do this effectively by swaying the hips, kind of the action that I just worked through, or scooting the flesh of the buttocks out of the way. Feel firmly anchored and planted into the bones. Feet flex, kick out through the heels, and with your inhale, arms sweep high, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bend your right elbow, hook right elbow into the right inner thigh, and bow out your left side body. Find a gaze that is helpful, neutral looking forward, looking down towards the right kneecap or up beyond the left elbow. And then pressing into your left sitting bone if it begins to peel up. Maintain integrity behind your shape. Inhale, upward arms, feel the echo of that. Exhale, take it over to the left. Left elbow hooks, right side bows. Often the right sitting bone begins to lift. So you find a little more depth, but press it into your mat. And keep spiraling the heart open. Find a gaze that is helpful. And inhale, arms lift high. Exhale, wide leg forward fold. There might be a little depth, and that's fine. Just be patient with yourself. 
There might be a little more depth where you can bend the elbows and ground them. In the full expression of the posture, please do not force, but feel to what's appropriate. The abdomen, front ribs, chest, and head take rest. And a gentle reminder that the depth of your folds or the open qualities in your hamstrings and hips, they do not make you a better or worse individual. What matters is that you are taking your practice, you are taking the sensations with stride and a sense of grace. Now, practice teaches us to replace these feelings of lack or fear with faith and with trust. And stay calm, stay with me, call into the hands, press them into your mat. With an inhale, lift your torso. And with your exhale, collecting your legs and begin your recline down to your back body. A little bit slower if you want the core work, faster if you're ready to call it. And once you're on your back, arms from your side bodies, palms down. Drive into your heels, inhale, bridge pose. At the top of your bridge, relax your glutes. Soften the gaze. If you enjoy a bind, consider the expansion of your chest. Roll the shoulders beneath the heart and interlace your fingers down to the webbing, base of the palms draw into one another. And it's a gentle press of the back of the head into your mat. Feel spaciousness through the neck. Releasing any binds. Articulate the spine as you lower down one vertebra at a time. And there's our skill of patience. Meeting in constructive rest. Toe heel your feet wide, angle your toes in, and knock your knees together. Just holding space for the breath. your feet back to hips with distance, hug your right knee into your chest, left leg elongates. Take a full breath in. Exhale, supine twist, guide your right leg all the way over to the left. You can interlace your fingers and let your palms rest on your right ribs, or a big opening of the arms, capital T, and then encourage the gaze to the right. If you find your left glute gripping and resisting, soften through your left leg and left toes. Just moving the breath from the nostrils all the way down to your navel. Holding for your inhalation, let the prana soak into your spine. Your exhalation, unwind. Give a quick interlace of the fingers behind your right hamstrings. Flex your right foot and kick your right heel to the ceiling. And we'll take that with the breath. Hold for your inhale. Exhale, rebend. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, shorten. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Switch out the lines of the legs. Elongate through your right and shorten your left. Ardha Apanasana, half wind relieving pose as you breathe in deeply. Exhale, spinal twist. Left leg crosses the midline and your hips stack. So you're drawing the right hip beneath the left. Recall your options. Interlace the fingers on left ribs or the arms open, fingertip to fingertip. It's well received by the neck. Send your gaze over to the left. And five breath. Thank you. 
for your inhale. Exhale, unwind. Let your low back level. Take the interlace of your fingers on left hamstrings. Flex your left foot. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, shorten. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. We breathe in. The state of connection. And we breathe out. Hug your right knee into your chest, apanasana. And peel up the shoulders, neck and head, a tiny little tuck, little squeeze. If it's sustainable, catch opposite wrists, forearms, or full expression, opposite elbows. And then we engage everything, distributing the length, excuse me, the awareness of the body from toes to fingers. Engage the hands, the arms, the shoulders, neck, head. Squeeze your glutes, your core, your legs, your toes. Big inhale. And with your exhale, release into Shavasana, your final resting pose. Now, if you'd like to support your Shavasana, there are a couple of ways that you can do that. Using a blanket that you have at home, you can fold that up and let that support your neck and your head. Now, any kind of pillow that you may have, or bolster if you have that at home, you can brace that underneath your knees. If you run cold, like I do, um, grabbing any extra layers, socks or sleeves, you can wrap that up and around the body. And then to our final rest. Chin below the forehead, let your neck elongate. And traditionally in Shavasana, the hands are open, natural curl through your fingers. Let the heels ground and the feet become floppy. And to support the settling of your own energy as well as the energy in our space, our collective practice, we cleanse the exhalation. Take your time as you breathe in sweetly. And open mouth, let it go. With that, may you enjoy your time in the final rest. May you enjoy your time in chosen ease.
your awareness back to your body, back to your space. Deepen your breathing and invite gentle movement back into your body. Until you move any way that feels comfortable. Eventually, draw your knees to your chest. closing. So you can rest your hands at your knees, or if you want to take Yana Mudra, you'll bring the tip of your thumb to the tip of your index finger. This is an appropriate mudra for today because it represents oneness. The thumb speaks to universal or global conscious or cosmic consciousness and the index finger represents human or individual consciousness when the two join represents oneness guide your hands to the heart center anjali mudra from suffering. Thank you so much for joining and Caitlin, thank you so much for that beautiful class. We hope you guys continue to join us as we host these classes at noon every day and maybe we'll be adding more. Um, and we wish all of you safety and togetherness through this time. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. It was truly my pleasure to guide you through the practice. If you have any questions, um, comments, feedback for myself or for Mason as we navigate through the next two weeks with the noon practices, please let us know. And again, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for hosting. Yeah. yeah. Peace. Thanks. <laughs> well, it seemed okay. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Seemed good.